an island of giant statues, a vast plateau covered in enormous geoglyphs, a megalithic settlement that dates back more than 12,000 years. On Ancient Aliens, we've trekked across deserts, hacked through jungles, flown to remote islands, and climb rugged mountains in order to investigate extraordinary sites that seem to defy any conventional explanation. Cusco, Peru. On the northern outskirts of what was once the capital city of the Inca, at an elevation of more than 12,000 feet, looms the ancient fortress of Sacsayhuaman. Mainstream archaeologists suggest the Inca built this megalithic site in the 15th century AD. But many researchers now believe that the foundation of Sangse Woman dates back centuries earlier. My feeling is that we're looking at a two-phase uh, construction site in many of the so-called uh, Inca stone monuments. And that the Inca structures sit on top of much more ancient rock cut structures and megalithic structures that we just don't know who built them. And this actually fits with the Inca's own view. Like many Inca sites, Sacsayhuaman features astonishing stonework, but not all of it credited to the Inca. According to conventional archaeology, the Kilki culture built the older sections of the site approximately 1,000 years ago. But the Inca themselves believed the site was constructed by an earlier unnamed race of people, led by a powerful god who descended from the skies. Throughout time, there has been witness to a god named Veracocha that visited the South American people and blessed them and gave them all types of technology. Some of his physical characteristics make him stand out from the indigenous population because he was not at all similar to the indigenous people. Viracocha was the primary deity of the Andes, going back many thousands of years. He was thought to be the founder of all the ancient sites we see in Peru and Bolivia today. But did Viracocha actually exist? Could he have been, as ancient astronaut theorists suggest, a visitor from an alien world. If so, it might help to explain just how the ancient site was constructed. It's amazing all these, uh, the, the weight of the stones. It's difficult definitely for any human to, to move, even in groups. And the other aspect is the, how it's put together. In some stones, we will see still now there is like uh, some marks that it seems that it was dissolved. The walls are put together with blocks of stone weighing 50 or 100 tons, cut and shaped like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle so that they lock together so tightly that you can't even get a sheet of paper between them. According to local legend, a bird was responsible for the seamless construction. Legends say the winged creature carried a powerful chemical in its beak, a substance capable of melting stone. Sacsayhuaman means the head of the falcon, falcon's head. But maybe it was some falcons or maybe some bird people who could connect with the place. But is it possible, as ancient astronaut theorists suggest, that the mythical bird might actually have been a spacecraft, piloted by alien visitors known to the locals as Space Brothers? I believe that it's a combination of the Space Brothers technology with other kind of possibilities. Nowadays, we know, well, different kind of tools. We didn't have before this kind of tools, or maybe we had more sophisticated. So the thing is that this place, Saksai Waman, it continues as a mystery. Eastern Lebanon, the Becca Valley. Here at this archeological site stand the ruins of Heliopolis. Built in the fourth century BC by Alexander the Great to honor Zeus. But beneath the Corinthian columns and remnants of both Greek and Roman architecture lie the ruins of a site that is much 
much older. According to archaeologists, it dates back nearly 9,000 years. The ancient city of Baalbek, named after the early Canaanite deity, Baal. Baal is the god of life, the god of the sky, the god of the sun. He was the god that was venerated on the site of Baalbek during the Canaanite and the Phoenician times. And so because it was already sacred to the god Baal, then later the Greeks and the Romans then would build temples on this very same spot. Archaeological surveys have revealed that the enormous stone foundation that lies at the base of the site dates back thousands of years. Baalbek, as we know from the archaeological evidence, must have existed during the Neolithic period, between six to 8,000 years or even 9,000 years BC. But even more significant to ancient astronaut theorists is their belief that the colossal stone platform may have been built using extraterrestrial technology. As evidence, researchers point to the gigantic megalithic stones incorporated into the foundation, each weighing between 800 to 1,600 tons and perfectly fitted together. In Balbek, stone blocks were transported, which have a weight of over 1,500 tons. And this not in a flat land, it's all mountain. We have absolutely no idea how such heavy loads could have been transported in the mountain. I have not even a speculation to this, but for sure it does never fit into the prehistoric knowledge of our ancestors. This is the real mystery of Baalbek, how these stones came to be there, why they were placed there, and specifically how they were transported into place. Because some of the stones are of such magnitude that modern machinery is incapable of putting them there, but somehow our ancestors were able to do this. It is one of the oldest, oldest megalithic sites on the planet. And it has these huge stones laid out in a precise geometrical shape at a time when the prehistoric people who would have lived there would have no concept of how to move stones of that nature. But if the moving, hoisting, and setting of such massive stones was so incredibly difficult, then who or what help to place them there? And perhaps more importantly, why? We know that the ancients always went to power places and Baalbek clearly is one of them. It is a place where the gods were worshiped, where the gods were said to be present. And so when it comes to Baalbek, this platform was built there for a reason. For what purpose it was used is a question we can't answer at this moment in time. But what we do know is that whatever was happening there had a great religious significance to them and was linked with worshipping deities. Deities which clearly are of an otherworldly origin. Hopefully at one point, archaeology will be so open-minded that they actually want to explore this further. Bolivia. South America. Here lie the mysterious ancient ruins of Pumapunku. Spread across a desert plateau are dozens of megalithic stone blocks cut with extreme precision. And some weigh more than 100 tons. These are the mysterious ruins of Pumapunku, nearly 13,000 feet in the Altiplano of Bolivia. What you have here are massive blocks of granite scattered like some kids' toy blocks around the site. Archaeologists are baffled by what Pumapunku was, how it looked, and what the purpose of this enormous structure would have been. What sets Pumapunku apart from other ancient megalithic sites is the incredible stonework, which some researchers suggest is far too sophisticated to have been accomplished using primitive tools. One of the amazing things here at Pumapunku is the precision of the blocks. 
you can see with this block of granite that it's really been cut at very accurate right angles. Not only do these granite blocks have precision corners, but they also have these difficult drill holes that are going right through the rock. Mainstream scientists believe the site was originally constructed about 2,000 years ago. But in 1945, archaeologist Arthur Poznanski proposed that Pumapunku was much, much older. By examining the structures and what he believed were their original alignment with the stars, he dated the ruins to 15,000 BC. But how could such primitive people, living perhaps over 10,000 years ago, have produced such flawless stonework? The Spanish conqueror asked the Inca, the people living there, including the king of the Inca, what is this Pumapunku? And they all said, it's not us. It's not our forefather who made this. This were made by the gods in one single night. One of the earliest chronicles that we have in regards to Puma Punku talks about that these giant platforms were moved through the air by the sound of a trumpet. They basically floated into place. And here's another very interesting thing that, according to the myths, this is exactly what happened with the Moai on Easter Island. Could it be that the local traditions of Easter Island and Pumapunku tell nearly identical stories of levitation because the ancient people at both sites witnessed the same extraterrestrial technology? And if the stone blocks of Pumapunku were once part of a megalithic structure, how did it end up in ruins? I honestly believe the Pumapunku is more than 12,000 years old. 12,000 years ago, there was a global cataclysm that destroyed a lot of ancient sites that we find, whether in Egypt or the Altiplano of Bolivia. We had, at the end of the last ice age, all kinds of catastrophic flooding due to the events and the climate changes and the melting of the glaciers and increased precipitation. There were incredible rises in sea levels since the end of the last ice age. More than 12,000 years ago, Lake Titicaca was 100 feet higher than it is today and I believe that Pumapunku was literally on the shore of the lake at that time, whereas now it's eight miles away. 12,000 years ago, it was hit by a wave of mud coming from Lake Titicaca as a tsunami. A megalithic structure built more than 12,000 years ago with the help of extraterrestrial technology destroyed by a great cataclysm. If this incredible story is true, one question still remains. What was Pumapunku? When you look at the complexity of Pumapunku, the huge platforms, the interlocking blocks, it was made into what they thought were indestructible walls. What you could have is the kind of perfectly made granite, spaceport that extraterrestrials would want. 